Hello everyone. Hope you are all doing well so far. In this lesson, we discuss the various causes of hypertension. About 90% of cases of hypertension is considered primary or essential, with no identifiable cause for the elevated blood pressure. It tends to develop gradually over many years. However, certain risk factors increase the risk of a person developing hypertension. These risk factors include 1. Age. The risk of high blood pressure increases with age. Until about age 64, high blood pressure is more common in men. Women are more likely to develop high blood pressure after the age of 65. Second is race, especially among black people. Third is family history. Fourth is obesity or being overweight. Excess weight causes changes in the blood vessels, the kidneys, and other parts of the body. Five is lack of exercise. Not exercising can cause weight gain, which raises the risk of high blood pressure. People who are inactive also tends to have higher heart rates. Six, tobacco use or vaping. Smoking, chewing tobacco, or vaping immediately raises blood pressure temporarily. Tobacco smoking injures blood vessel walls and speeds up the process of hardening of the arteries. 7. Too much salt. This can cause the body to retain fluid and increase blood pressure. 8. Low potassium levels. Potassium helps balance the amount of salt in the body cells. Low potassium levels may be due to lack of potassium in the diet or dehydration. 9. Drinking too much alcohol. Alcohol use has been linked with increases in blood pressure, particularly in men. 10. Is stress. High levels of stress can lead to a temporary increase in blood pressure. Stress-related habits such as eating more, using tobacco, or drinking alcohol can lead to further increases in blood pressure. And lastly, pregnancy. Sometimes, pregnancy causes high blood pressure. In the remaining 10%, the increase in blood pressure may be attributable to a specific cause and therefore potentially reversible. It is more common in the elderly and must be ruled out. Clinical clues that should raise suspicion for a secondary cause of hypertension include the following. First, is snoring or daytime sleepiness. Second, is abrupt onset of hypertension. Third, is hypertensive onset less than 30 years of age. Fourth, accelerated or malignant hypertension. Fifth, is abrupt loss of blood pressure control in a patient with prior blood pressure control. And sixth, use of blood pressure raising substances such as NSAIDs, amphetamine, and immunosuppressive agents. Seventh, resistant hypertension or taking three or four antihypertensive drugs, including a diuretic and blood pressure above goal, or taking greater than or equal to four drugs, including a diuretic and blood pressure below goal. Eight, refractory hypertension, which is the taking of greater than or equal to five drugs, including a diuretic and blood pressure above goal. Ninth, is unprovoked hypertension, while not taking a diuretic. 10 is excessive hypokalemia. And lastly is the onset of diastolic hypertension in patients older than 65 years old. Common secondary cause of hypertension in the elderly includes chronic kidney disease or CKD and renal artery stenosis. Other causes include obstructive sleep apnea, primary aldosteronism, Cushing's disease, pheochromocytoma, hyperparathyroidism, aortic coarctation, and intracranial tumors. We will now discuss some of the more common secondary causes of hypertension and their therapeutic interventions. First, chronic kidney disease or CKD. CKD can be either a cause of or a result of hypertension. A decline in glomerular filtration rate 
or GFR with aging occurs in most individuals, although it is not inevitable. And this is more pronounced in individuals with hypertension and atherosclerosis and those who smoke. The incidence of CKD increases with advancing age, with the odds ratio for the development of CKD rising from 1.58 in those aged 40 to 59 years old to 5.53 in those aged 60 years and older. In elderly patients with isolated systolic hypertension, systolic blood pressure is a strong and independent predictor of the decline in renal function. At present, estimation of the glomerular filtration rate or GFR using the modified diet in renal disease formula or the cockcroft galt equation provides a better gauge of kidney function than serum creatinine alone and is preferably paired with a urinalysis to check for albuminuria. It is important to screen for CKD if present as this has implication in terms of choice of antihypertensive agent and blood pressure goals. The mainstay of antihypertensive treatment used in patients with CKD is the antihypertensive agents, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor, and angiotensin-renin blockers, as well as dietary salt restrictions. Bedtime dosing of at least one antihypertensive agent is important due to higher incidence of non-dippers in hypertensive patients with CKD. Next is renal artery stenosis. In the elderly, stenosis of the renal artery is often due to atherosclerosis. About 7% of individuals aged over 65 years have some degree of renal artery narrowing, and 60% of patients have hypertension or other evidence of atherosclerotic disease, like coronary artery disease or peripheral artery disease. Renal artery stenosis should be suspected in 1. An elderly patient who presents with new onset or accelerated hypertension with worsening of blood pressure control. 2. In patients with resistant hypertension, 3 or more medication to bring the blood pressure to go. 3. In patients with asymmetric kidneys on imaging, with a difference of greater than 1.5 cm. And lastly, in those who present with flash pulmonary edema or acute renal failure after initiating renin angiotensin system blocker therapy, like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers or direct renin inhibitors. Imaging techniques used to evaluate the patency of the renal artery includes renal Doppler ultrasound, computed tomography angiography, and magnetic resonance angiography, and are used as screening tests. The gold standard for diagnosis remains renal artery angiography. Treatment includes modification of cardiovascular risk factors, antihypertensive therapy, and in eligible patients, revascularization, but this has not consistently been shown to normalize blood pressure in hypertensive patients. Only consider renal artery revascularization in the following situations. This is an expert opinion. 1. In refractory hypertension, where uncontrolled blood pressure while taking greater than or equal to 5 drugs one of which is diuretic. 2. In worsening renal function or ischemic nephropathy. And lastly, in intractable heart failure. Patients, 90% of which are women, with fibromuscular dysplasia are typically diagnosed early in their early 50s. The effective recommended treatment is angioplasty without stenting. First line antihypertensives for patients with renal artery stenosis includes diuretics, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are classified as second line agents. 
And the last one is sleep apnea syndrome. Obstructive sleep apnea occurs when breathing is briefly and repeatedly interrupted during sleep. It has been shown to increase risk for high blood pressure. Research also shows that high blood pressure can cause sleep apnea or worsen breathing in a patient already affected by sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is most common among middle-aged adults 30 to 70 years old and occurs more frequently in men than in women. Many patients with sleep apnea and or high blood pressure are obese. This may help explain why most patients are affected by both conditions. Research suggests that anywhere from 30 to 50% of patients with high blood pressure have sleep apnea. However, sleep apnea is much more common in patients with resistant hypertension who have tried a variety of high blood pressure treatment but can't get their conditions under control. It is commonly encountered in patients with resistant and refractory hypertension, non-restorative sleep, snoring, and daytime sleepiness are clinical clues to pursue this diagnosis. Treatment for sleep apnea may aid in lowering blood pressure levels. A simple mask called Continued Positive Airway Pressure, or CPAP, which helps promote normal breathing during sleep, has been shown to reduce blood pressure levels. This concludes our discussion on causes of hypertension. See you on the next lecture on end organ damage secondary to hypertension.